everyone. Welcome to LOA Uncork. This is Holly. And this is Gina. Oh, Gina, today, I mean, this I is like something special today. I know. It's really special because you know what? I mean, I'd love to start with that. I know. I never know. You. I never know. Yes. You know what? We have a magnificent lady all the way from Iceland. Well, that I did know. Darn it. Yes. I, I know, it was, I'm, you're going to throw something weird into it. I am going to throw yeah. something weird. We yeah. have a leadership coach and mentor. Uh -huh. And here's what I'm going to say this, that, I mean, it's not weird, but you want to become better, bolder, brighter. You yes. want to talk about branding yes. boxes. I mean, no boxes. Ooh. You've got Runa Magnus today uh -huh. and that's a whole lot of bees. We're going to break it down to like, I'm so good. I know. I We're going to break there. that down <laughs> further with this badass boss. <laughs> Oh yes. High five me, Gina. I, I was picking We're up on the putting down. Yes. All sure. right. Welcome, Runa Magnus. Thank you so much for being here. Gosh, this <laughs> is going to be something. Thank, <laughs> thank you. Thank you, both of you. I'm so honored to be your guests. Oh, <laughs> we're you. thrilled to have yes. you today. Yeah. You know, we typically start our podcast off with just a little bit of grounding for our, our listeners, just to kind of get a a sense of you, your background, your kind of the milestones and the highlights of Runa. So if you wouldn't mind just doing a quick overview of who you are, uh, your roots, your big milestones and what brings you to us today and the work that you're doing, I think would be a great place to ground our conversation for today. Oh, thank you. Well, I try to be, I try to put, put things together so it doesn't become a long nothing. <laughs> <laughs> And that is, all. I mean, honestly, it's an art for people to try and package your life up, right? It like, is true. It's, yeah, I mean, yeah. No put, you, put your life story into a short sentence. And I go, yeah, <laughs> sure, I'll do that. Um, to, to give you um, as short as I can, I, yeah, I'm, I'm from Iceland. I'm born, raised, in, and living in Iceland. And uh, from, from as far as I can remember, I've been... Um, really really interested in human behavior mm. and in particularly i've been interested in these things about what women should do what men should do and um i was lucky as a young girl as a teenager i was so fortunate to be uh, able to live in the united states for a, for a year, I, I actually graduated, graduated from my high school in the US. And that gave me just more to ponder over, seeing the difference between gender roles in the US versus in Iceland. And then as I uh, went into my career, I was fortunate enough to be, my first job really was, I was a private secretary for the Minister of Culture and Education in Iceland, which happened to be the first woman taking that role. Mm -hmm. And following that, I, 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 uh, I was doing some work for, with uh, computers, and then my mom had just started a, an import business, and I thought, why, why don't I go and, and help my mom a little bit? And, and I had a son at the time, he was two. And I remember thinking, oh, I'm going to quit my job, just going to, you know, do be more with him, be more of a mom and uh, help my mom a little bit. And of course, I mean, going into a business with my mother, um, that I, I don't think that he saw me anymore. I think actually he saw me just less. Um, so that actually grew into, I sold that business um, back in 2007 and, and well, 2006 and 2007, I stood in front of that question, Runa, what do you, what do you want to do when you grow up? Yeah. Literally, that was the first time that I remember asking myself this question. So I went into coaching, I went into, you know, marketing and studied some. And there I had this idea um, coming up on the surface, which was um, as, a, as a business owner, in my, I, I had been so fortunate to be invited to be at various huge conferences around the world uh, for women in business, women entrepreneurs, um, for women in the corporate world, you know, there was a big conference. And I had, I remembered 
attending one of them actually in Seoul, Korea, I remember uh, really pondering over why isn't it possible for me to get to use the technology to get to know these women that mm -hmm. were there. And so that was a little idea that was seated back in Korea. Mm -hmm. And then when I had that space to thinking about what do you want to do when you grow up, that idea came up again. And mm -hmm. I decided to do something about it. And I founded a platform called Connected Women, which was one of the very first platforms, online platforms for um, a really social media thing. It was, this was really in the beginning of the early days of Facebook. And before I knew it, there were women from, I think, 75 countries signed up. Uh, and um, I, it was really thriving. And that led me to speaking around the world. And then I saw that women, so many of these women, had fabulous things that they were doing, but they were not actually showing up. So I thought, how can I help them show up and not be so always behind and, and you know, kind of like not feeling that they were good enough or not big enough business, whatever there was. So that led me to branding, personal branding. And so you can see it's just kind of like one thing after another. Yeah. Yeah. Then my, I would say, uh, I mean, that group, that part, wow, where do I start? There was just so many things that came, that were happening and I, for me at that, I'm, I was listed on Forbes, like I was, uh, I was on Oprah, you know, and there were a lot of things that were happened. And then 2018, I was invited to speak at the UN, um, me and a group of people that I've founded together called the Changemakers. And we were looking at um, the three out of the 15 UN Sustainable Development Goals. We were looking at peace, sustainability, and gender equality, something that I'm very passionate about. Mm -hmm. And um, right there at the UN, I was listening to one of my chain bankers on a panel called Conversation with Man, and he gets this question. The question was, why haven't we reached these goals? Mm, yeah. And Nick sits there and he very quietly, openly just shares. He says, well, actually, it's quite simple. It's because we keep putting people into boxes. And although it's a way for us to understand the world, it just doesn't make any sense to expect people to live and behave as these boxes. And you guys, that, that was my matrix moment. I just, I sat there and I went, oh, whoa, now I get it. Now I get it that despite everything that we have achieved in Iceland when it comes to gender equality, I don't know if you know, but we've been number one mm -hmm. in the world for this, I think, 12, 13 years. Mm -hmm. Yes. Everything that I've done, everything that we've been doing, I kept feeling that the more equality we were seeing, the more gap I saw happening between the genders. And it was mm. like, it, it was like we were becoming, we were competing rather than unifying mm -hmm. and using the best out of the best. So there I thought, oh yeah, those boxes. Yeah, we keep doing that. And then Nick, he's, I can hear that Nick, is, he continues with his talk and he says, well, what happens if you are a man and you are loving, you're caring and you want nothing more than to take care of your children and, and just be a homemaker. And you told the man up, you know, you told, you know, you're not mad enough yeah. and you, you're being judged. And then I thought, as I was there, I thought, oh, wow, that's like he's talking about my ex-husband. You see, mm -hmm. I was married and got divorced uh, decades ago, but the years before our marriage ended, my ex-husband was a stay-at-home dad. Mm -hmm. And although rationally, I thought I didn't judge him, I saw other people judging him, 
yeah. but I rushed in and I thought I didn't. I right that I saw a hat. Mm-hmm. Right that I saw that unconsciously. Yes. I just did. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that was a terrible, terrible feeling. Yeah. Because it I didn't realize it, like everything that is unconscious, you know. And then I can hear Nick, he continues and he says, um, and what if you're a woman and you're just straightforward, you just, you just want things to happen and you're just a go-getter. You're told to, you know, not to be so confrontational, be a more of a lady. Don't, you know, you need to be more diplomatic. And I thought, holy moly, Nick is talking about me now. And you know, I could literally hear my mom's voice saying these things, what Nick was pointing out. And I said, yeah, wow, I've actually been boxed all the time as well. And then I saw tons of myself doing that and others doing that. It was just a matrix moment. Anyway, you said I was supposed to do this quickly, didn't you? No, no I didn't I, say no. that. No, oh, no this no, is no. very, very good. This, this is, is great. Good. I'm trying this to perfect. cut it short. Yeah, no, anyway, this perfect. this confidence takes an end and Nick and I were going in in our taxi going to JFK and because there was a storm coming up this ride that was supposed to take like 40 minutes was two and a half hours and in that taxi we continued to talk about boxes we talked about how boxing people in has created the concentration camp camp, Mm. the slavery the the endless battle for people grouping together that are not getting are not being heard not being seen because they are this or they are that Mm -hmm. and we just decided in that cap that was it we could not we can't continue this way we have to we have to open up some conversations give people some understanding that although it's as natural as anything for us to do this, that it just doesn't make any sense that we take it as the truth. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. So we, when we said goodbye to each other at JFK, he was going to UK, I was going to Iceland. We just made a pact. We said, okay, we're going to create a movement. We We are going to create safe space for people to come together and open up these boxes. We're going to write a book. And that's just what we did. Wow. I mean, I love this story. So let's unpack some of this for our listeners. Yes, so yeah. Nick is Nicholas Haynes, yes. who we've had on the podcast. And we'll link that episode yeah, in the show notes. About the water mm, tiger. Yes. Uh, but he's so much more. Oh. And he's the co-author of The Story of Boxes, the Good, the Bad, the Ugly. Yes. Okay. Yes. Which is what you're talking about. And the co-creator of the, the movement, um, methodology and lifestyle of right. no more boxes. So right. we're talking about gender, which is near and dear to our hearts. Yes. But the story of boxes really, like you were suggesting, Runa goes very, very deep into, yeah. you know, even the history of, you know, why do we circumcise do man, we do men? Mm-hmm. You know, why do yeah. we do that? Why would we continue to do right. that? And, right. you know, it goes very, very deep. And um, I do want to just go back and say, like, I'm, sitting here well there's so much okay yeah, i know I, I'm, I want to get back to the gender but i'm just sitting here blown away by the story of your life yes and and i you know let me get the question out so the question is it feels like and i know you compressed it and there, there must have been tough times in between but it, but it feels like it is a life of charm and flow it really does and um, even the, you know, waking up one day in 2006 or whatever year it was that you said, this says, okay, what do I want to do with my life? You had already been the first woman here and right. you had already done so much. You're creating, you have co-founded so many other yes. things, the, the network of transformational leaders, the, you know, the gender equality that you've done. I mean, there's, there's a lot more underneath, which we covered in the intro, mm-hmm. uh, a, a lot more even underneath there of your you know, gifts to this world. Stewardship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so why, I mean, help us under, like, how do I get there? I don't know. I don't know. I'm watching you try it, but it's really fun to watch. Maybe it's her astrology chart. Maybe I need to look at her chart. Yeah. uh She's just charmed. Okay. Because 
I have a lot of red lines on mine. Okay, yeah. so uh, anyway, that's aspects. That's, you know, it's astrological funny yeah. stuff. Yeah. Okay, that we don't need to talk about yeah. right now. No. But anyway, can you, can you comment on that before we kind of dive into some of your work? Can you repeat? Yes, uh, it's, it's really about, I know there was a lot there. Yeah. Okay, it's really about how you navigated your life, the flow. Did you feel like you, you know, uh, really um, flowed through without resistance? Did you, what does that look like? Because it looks blessed. Did it and feel as charmed yes. as it sounds? Yes. I it does. Yeah. Maybe, well, yeah. here's, here's the thing. Here's the thing. And, 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 uh, this is what, when, on retrospect, when looking back and, yes. and, and, and knowing what I know now and seeing what has happened. No, it has not always been in a flow. No, 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 no. I, 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 I have, I had a jumpy road, and, you know, uh, no one goes through a marriage and a, and a divorce no. with, without a little bit, a little bit of a, a bump or two. Mm -hmm. Um, um, but what I when I look back on things, um, I see that, and I believe actually in this now. I believe that we all come to this earth. We're all born on this earth um, with a promise. So there is something that we promise our universe, our planet, our earth, wherever we were born, and when we get space when we get that freedom that that nurture that 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 surround that environment that that nurture you in one way or another we have more the opportunity to know our promise and to do what we can do in this lifetime to fulfill that promise and that's what I, I'm becoming more and more towards that thought or that vision. Because if we look at it from that angle, and I'm glad that you had mentioned Nick and, and the water type and, and his specialities when it comes to the, the Chinese energies. We are energies. We know that. And when you look at our vitality and you look at the, the promise that you make when you're born, and if you get the, if you are in your flow and you get to fulfill that promise, whatever that is, by knowing and respecting and honoring your flow, there is no such thing as gender in yeah. that mm. space. Mm -hmm. yeah because we make it so muddy have you noticed we make it so muddy you know i'm i'm a woman last time i checked <laughs> but still i have these elements in me that are considered to be masculine mm -hmm. and the beautiful thing with nick being a man i haven't checked but he tells me <laughs> yeah <laughs> that he has this beautiful nurturing in him which is considered to be female. Mm -hmm. And we mutt this together mm -hmm. and we're judging. And we're we're being, you know, we're being isolated or we're being, we've been, you know, put into places that are not nurturing enough us, not empowering us to be our highest version of ourselves because of that. Right. So when you say when you ask me these questions i think that unconsciously i was on that on that just trip journey mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. and i can tell you um you know those big things that have happened in my life that created stagnation those were the things where i got sick those were the days where mm -hmm. I was really questioning myself. Those were the days when I cried and I was exhausted and I felt like I was burning out. You know, those are the days when you do, when you don't follow, mm -hmm. when you don't keep your promise, 
that you promised when you were born. Yeah. I love that. So I love that you revealed, thank you for revealing that, you know, it's tough even for the charmed outward looking life that it's yeah. still a journey, yes. you know, it's not a destination. And one of the things that we talked about with Nicholas when he was here was know your vitality right. test. And we encourage our listeners to do that. One of the things, you know, on LOA and Cork, we say even to manifest when you manifest an amazing life, yeah in our opinion. And one of the things we say is to know yourself, but I love the fact that she's connected to your promise. Yes. I love it. And never we've never it said, like said it like that, mm -hmm. but I mm -hmm. love that, you know, to know yourself, I'm wood, am I free? You yeah, know, yeah. my biggest question in life is, am, am, am I free? And where I've been stagnant is where I didn't feel free. Now free is a state of mind, but right. there are free some is one energy actually. Yes. Freedom is, is an expression of one energy. Yes, mm -hmm. exactly. Mm -hmm. And that's the wood. And so I, I love that you tied it to the, the yeah, purpose. That and, is perfect. And yeah. we, we think that too. Now, when you're talking about gender and I'm, I'm going to, we can go to the middle, but I want to skip to the end of gender. Do you feel like, because I too, I've been in the corporate world my whole entire life and many, many years. And I feel the gender box um, has changed some. So I would have been put in your gender box where I want results and I'm direct. And so I'm the masculine side of the equation. Scary when I and bossy and yeah, pushy. Because, and, because yeah. I request, I'm always respectful. I'm always this, that, and the other thing. But what um, the problem now I see is now that box has become bullying mm -hmm. or has become there's more retaliation now to your point it feels like the boxes the, are the genders are retaliating yeah now because the yeah. men even in the your conflict. book you said this and i love that the dynamic duo of you and nick uh writing that book together you know a female and a male perspective even yeah. though it's much more i'm going to keep saying it's much more than just genders but um you know i i i you know you said it in the book that you know men since the me too movement they're afraid to be alone with a woman. I get that. You know, right. I understand from a man's perspective that they could absolutely feel that way. Right. And so is there a lot, but I think the boxes are actually not getting less. They're multiplying in a weird way, at least in corporate America here in the United States. And I've heard it from more than just my experience. And then for being female, it's like, you know, you're too much and then you're not enough. You're never perfect. I mean, you can never quite hit that bullseye, right. whatever that is, Yep. you know? And so what are your thoughts on that? And I know you're in the process of writing your third book, which is if genders have no future, I think is the name of that book. And you can, that's you the can, working title. Yeah. Yep. The working title. And so I know it's near and dear to your heart. How do you feel about that right now? And is there a new movement, a retaliation movement or some Great other question. thing that's happening in the gender equality? Well, that it's, um, I am, when I'm, this is the first time that I actually say this out loud, you guys. Mm -hmm. So, uh, <laughs> Breaking. Yeah. Breaking, everybody. breaking yeah. news. Breaking news. Another beat. Breaking yeah. news. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. exactly. Oh, I love um, you about your yeah. own. I know. Her own sound effect. I, I love, love this. Okay, this is great. <laughs> Perfect. Um, we are writing up the manifesto. Oh, I love a manifesto. For the new paradigm of gender equality. And I love that you so boldly say it's a manifesto. I that love I love. Mm -hmm. I'm excited. Wow. So I said it first. Mm -hmm. Wow. Here. Right. Wow. I love that. Love it. Well, you and know, it's so... I think we need that because, listen, yes. the one thing that I've noticed, and I'm just going to give you a little background, something that was an aha moment for me. You know, of course... We, we evolve as, as mm -hmm. humanity and I can, I can remember um, back in 1975 uh, when women in Iceland took a strike. I don't know if you, if you ever heard about that. So in 1975, it's not women in Iceland, whether they were working from home or working outside of home, they striked. And I remember my mom and her friends, they were so excited and i went downtown she went downtown <laughs> everyone went downtown and we, and we were singing and protesting and they were basically showing 
that whatever they were doing was needed, was important, was of value. And they proved it mm -hmm. because they had been, well, put into that box that whatever they were doing was worthless. Yeah. But yeah. they showed that was not the thing. Okay. That is in 1975. In 1980, um, I remember this is a year before I had the, the right to vote my, myself, but that was when the first woman was democratically elected as a female president. And I remember Vigdi Svimbadotir, that is her name, when she was, there was a debate on TV. She was the only woman, and then there were three, well, in my mind, I feel like they were very old men, but probably they were about maybe 50 or something, but they were really old as I looked at that. <laughs> and Vigdis was a single mom. Vigdis mm -hmm. had also gone through cancer therapy mm -hmm. and had needed to have one of her breasts removed. And the TV reporter asks her there on live television, he says, um, now, we've heard that you've gone through chemo and you needed to have your breast removed. Now, how are you going to serve the nation this way? No. And yeah, That's we are shocked. Crazy. This was in normal. Back 1980? In 1980. Yeah, this is oh. normal. See how things have changed? Yeah. This is 42 years ago. So she replies, she says, well, I'm not going to breastfeed the nation. <laughs> God bless her. God, I like her. You know? yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So what I, what I, the things that I want to point out is this is the, this is the social environment that I grew up with. Right. Okay. So I, I was born just like you guys, we were all born with a promise the promise that we are going to do in this lifetime, the things that we wanted to be, the things that we, wanna, we want to create, the, whatever that is. Now, my social conditioning, mm -hmm. how I then evolve is really affected by what is around me, like just like with you guys. Sure. Mm -hmm. So when we believe that women are one thing and men are another thing, it doesn't add up because we can see that when we have freedom and we are allowed to be more of who we were born to be, less conditioned to be, that's what we do. Today, in the environment that I am living in, we have parental leave where both parents take equal time off, paid. Yeah. We have... We see, you see men just as much as women, dads with or mothers with their strollers. Sick leaves, going, needing to go back to, you know, if your child is sick or whatever, it's both parents that are doing that. So you see, that doesn't mean, you know, back in 1980, if that would have been kind of weird. Yeah. yeah Do you know what yeah, I mean? Absolutely. Yeah, but women. now it's just, it's just normal. And the same thing goes with so many other things. It's like um, you go into, you know, already in, in, in most, most of the Western countries, I think I'm not going to put it all in one, but, mm -hmm. you know, women are even more coming out of the universities than men in many cases. Yes, yes that's so true. That we have more of women doctors, more of, you know, in, in lawyers, all of those things. So we have that, although at one point in time, we were told that we couldn't because of the gender, regardless, men or women. Mm -hmm. right. Right. So I think we need to be, I think this is a, a pivotal thing to think about for us and for anyone that is listening without going into judgmental voice, but just observing wh what did I grow up with? What? became yeah. normal for me. And why should that be the truth when I can see that there are other things out there that right. can be just as much yours if you are appealing to that right. as not? 
And that's where it really comes in our self-regulations, self-awareness, obviously, just being aware that, yeah, okay, this is how I was brought up. Uh, that doesn't mean that that's who I am. That's just the social construction that I brought, was brought up with. Now we see with the latest tech, latest researches on epigenetics and, and that that whole field and you know talking about law of attraction with the energies and all of that now we see that we can even change our patterns yeah. we can change it become you know change the the habit of being ourselves right right so this is what i think is so vitally important that we start to talk about and we start to look as much as we possibly can around us with those glasses on our nose so that we see okay it's that's life is so much more than that i'm just seeing a tiny tiny thing yeah i yeah i think it's so interesting so in your box you do talk about the framework of how do you uh how do you go about you know, analyzing all the boxes. Of course, we're talking about gender right now. Sure. And one of the things, and I, I was like, is this generational? Because does it, you know, right. does it change with generations? Because I'm in my fifties and um, I grew up in a all do male dominated. Mm -hmm. And so I wore the suit with the tie even. Mm -hmm. So it was like, well, what makes me successful? Cause I was scrappy to be successful. I was like, I know that it looks like a man. Mm -hmm. Okay. Like I have yeah. to look like a man yeah. to be successful yeah. down to the tie. And, you know, of course I wouldn't do that. Now there came a point where I liberated myself and I thought you're lucky to have me. I can wear anything I want. Okay. <laughs> like, you know, and yeah. uh, there was a liberation. Yeah. This was all internal. You guys, this wasn't anything that, you know, this was my shifting my awareness of this mm -hmm. is stupid, you know? And then I think about even now, I think um, in terms of like, there's an imbalance of, uh, what I've noticed in my trajectory is that that it was all masculine results, results of results. And, you know, when I started blending intuition and some of the more feminine side, you don't have to call it intuition, people. No, you do not. Um, you can and scare that people. better not to. It's better not to still. <laughs> but, you know, you pull in that ancient wisdom, the feminine side of things. And that's what was really needed, integration. And yeah. um, there's you know, that's one side of the gender thing, but I've seen that myself. So I feel like, is it generational and that our younger, our younger people don't have the same. Well, it would be because the construct is slowly evolving over time. Yes. You know, I mean, we grew up in the seventies and, you yeah. know, it's, uh, you know, it was, it was back to kind of what you were describing, uh, Runa, in terms of, you know, the social constructs around were very mm -hmm. masculine dominated and, you know, boys spoke first they you know were perceived to have all the the sports talents were supposed to you know do ballet and sing and you know some of those kinds of you know they did shop we did home ec you know it was that, that sort of you know you were kind of boxed in based on your gender into what even coursework you did in school um at least mm -hmm. here in the U.S. you know I think today that's less yeah that's less of a thing I mean it's still there's still a lot of it and still too much of it. And I th we're still trying to integrate clearly and the manifesto will help us with that. But I do, I, I do see in our children that, you know, they're, they're not in the same spot I was and they, they question those boxes more and there are less boxes for them to even identify I mean, all even. of it yeah. race boxes right. all of that you guys yep. touch upon that a little bit Sexual I think we, we need to yes. we, yeah. I think just pointing out I in many ways I do agree with what you're saying I yeah. think we need to say that some of the other generations are seeing it differently because we know as well that there are younger people as well that that are some of them are not Mm -hmm. Oh, it's very true. And we yeah. we continue yeah, to right. cue box yeah. into generations. We into you know age, um, and we're just so used to this. Yeah. Uh, no, you're therefore, right. therefore, we 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 want to just use that four letter word, add that into the conversation, because you you talk about manifesting, mm. and you talk about words. Uh, 
you know, words create your life. Yes. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So the more that we come up with these statements of the younger generation, the this, the that, the box that we are talking about, the more you're actually carving it into. Yeah. Box. Wow. wow. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Mm-hmm. So sense. just by mm. just by being aware, and when you hear someone say that, you can say, "Yeah, you mean some," or right. when you become aware that you are saying it because hey, we're just used to it, then you can say, "Oh, I meant to say some." So just so that becomes yeah. more Great. of Great. a traditional thing to say, rather than keep keep the old thing, because the more we keep the old thing, the more we're actually manifesting that. No, I mean, get out of here. Yeah, Yeah, absolutely. So, so can you talk to maybe like you have a framework, the, the three-step framework or whatever, so that we can acknowledge our boxes because we were creating more boxes in that conversation, Miss Gigi. Yes, (laughs) clearly I need all three steps. So we need it out with me in my back pocket at all times. We might need to to double it. Thank you for giving me that opportunity. Well, there are, there are actually four steps. Okay. First is the like you're saying, first is the self-awareness that yeah. just becoming aware. And I think um, with the with the in, rise of people wanting to be more mindful, learning mindfulness, meditation, all of these practices can help us so much to be more aware. Mm-hmm. It calms our nervous system. We're not more as, as more in, in fight and flight and all of that. Uh, but that awareness, um, when we gradually grow that awareness, we become more aware that how we, our reactions, it, our thoughts and our t- words, it's based on preformed thinking, okay. listening yeah. and acting. Yeah. It's not based on what we're where we are and where we're going we're always taking what was into the present moment mm-hmm. and as our brain makes no distinction between any time right. that becomes manifested in our body in our soul everywhere it's just that's how it is so that awareness is of course crucial but we can be extremely aware and do nothing. So the second one is self-regulation. That we create some sort of a rhythm, you know, something that it can be gratifying, something that is okay. Now I'm, 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 I wanna, I wanna become better at this. I want to uh, add uh, just like a, like I said, with some. Uh, this is what I'm gonna do. Okay, my regulation right now is that I'm gonna add that into my vocabulary. And I'm going to be conscious about that, putting that in there. You know, that could be one way of self-regulating. Mm-hmm. Right. It's a pretty simple one. And then it's okay to make a mistake. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You're just more aware. And, yeah. and that, that goes to the third one it is not to beat up the earlier version of yourself. Right. No. So be right. show yourself some self-love. And remember, um, that karma is always, 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 always on go on duty. So the more that you give love, receive love, that is that thing that you just, you become mm. more in that flow of things. So self-love is number three, that um, although something happened, although you done it, uh, give yourself time to heal. Uh, because there's so much when you heal you heal so much around you as well That's beautiful. and we need that in our world mm-hmm. and the fourth one is something that i find extremely important and that is to have humor for yourself mm-hmm. yeah you know this is serious stuff mm-hmm. it, is. it is and we all do this and but it's really yeah. I mean, it's really ridiculous that we think that you walk down the street and you see a woman and that your automatic system just expects her to be kind and loving and caring. 
Yeah. Yeah. And you see, that is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. And you have to be able to laugh at it. Yeah. Yeah. Just say, whoa, I did that again. Oh, you know. And having what we say, oh, where you talk about Nick and I, we talk about one of the things that we've seen that's been really helpful for people. And that is to have like um, a buddy, yeah. or someone who is there, like you two guys, mm -hmm. you know, now that I'm having this conversation with yeah, you, that absolutely. you kind of like give you each other a little nudge. You mean some, or didn't you, aren't you boxing me in now? Isn't that yeah. a box? You know, yeah. something, yeah. Something that kind of just, just can you can you feel how less tight that is? Yeah. Can you yeah. feel how more of a flow and the barriers go down? And you can right. instead of having that box that is rigid, it kind of like the walls go down and you can flow between. Oh. Because here's the thing. You know, I may be jolly, but right now, but I can be sad, I can yeah. be irritated. I can be a lot of things. So being able to flow between those things is as human as I can possibly think. Right? Yeah. Well, we, you know, we, I'm so glad you said, you know, the, the buddy, because I, it's been a, it's been the foundation of the podcast, honestly, is just so much of, you know, the inspiration for the podcast was our give and take in the friendship and, and mm -hmm. really, you know, committing to one another, to the other, their growth, yeah. their interests, their development, their value proposition mm -hmm. to the world and helping, encouraging, sponsoring them, both of us stepping into those things and really that give and take and conversation. I, we, we do it in a cab. We do it mm -hmm. in cars we're driving. Yeah. And we had a lot of the same kind of rides that you and Nick had, not from the UN yet, but I suspect we, we might be in the UN at some point in our life. Never you know. never know. You never know. However, they need us, Gina. They do need us. They, do. Oh, yeah, I, they don't know why, nor, <laughs> nor do we, but they, they do. do. So, um, so we, you know, but, but all of those conversations and we really feel like, you know, the foundation of the podcast was to create a community of people where just by listening to these conversations, you have sort of that give and take and that natural buddy system. So hopefully folks listening today can share this book, this concept with others, if it's something that they feel like they want to challenge themselves with and really seek partnership and guidance to do that. Cause it's more fun when you do it with someone anyway, oh, yeah. really. Absolutely. Yeah. And there's yeah. more awareness to be had. So I think Gina, we could use one more thing. We well, could level up our, yes. our partnership. Yes. So one of the things oh, you're going to love this, mm -hmm. Gina, you're going to like it. Okay. Uh -huh. One of the things that Rona before. knows very well is conscious questions. You remember oh, that? Yes, yes, yes. We yes. love the yes, power of conscious that. questions. So I think her and I need to question each other a little bit more. I mean, she's always crucifying me with, you know, I don't know, this, I mean, that, and the other thing. You so. don't buy any of that, do you? Like, <laughs> She's fucked me. how quiet and demure I am. <laughs> but yeah. no, I mean, I, I we really found the, Nick talked a little bit about it just yeah. before. I don't know that he did it uh, on our podcast, but maybe you can share a little bit about the power of integrating oh, those, those questions, questions into your life. Yes, excellent. Yeah. Yeah, as an example, just want to, when you're saying that, and because we're talking about boxes and all of those things, so one question could be, why is it okay to let go? Mm. Oh. Why is it okay to let go of judging another person? Mm -hmm. Why is that okay? Mm -hmm. Why is it okay to let go of judging myself? Yeah. Wow. Such a simple question, and yet, you know. But the way it's put, the way though, it's put, and why know. is it okay? It's as if you've already done it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why right. is it okay? Yeah. Why is it okay? Why is it okay to be a leader and be afraid? Mm -hmm. Well, that's the best kind of leader. Yeah, it know. really is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Talk about modeling exactly. anyway. It yeah. happens. Yeah. 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 Why is it okay to be a leader and you don't have all the answers? So there's a lot of, a lot of uh, self-care. Why is it okay 
to show myself and others love today. Yeah. Mm. Why is it okay? And why is it okay that this person doesn't call me? Or why is it okay that, you know, you can do it. You can right, yes. right, right. So many levels. And then just what it really does, it have, well, at least for me, what I've noticed, I use this with my clients quite a bit, is that just calms down your system. Right. And like we, I said earlier about those four steps out of, mm-hmm. you know, exploring and, and, and getting out of the boxes. It, the moment you calm down your nervous system, you have space to be more aware. Mm-hmm. So it becomes a cycle, you know. Mm-hmm. Well, even in the four steps, two of them are self-love and fun. Yeah. Right. Um, and so when you ask the question from a place of positive, you know, why is it okay? Mm-hmm. Versus you could easily conversely ask the other side of the coin, which is, you know, how, how, how is it bad that, you know, or whatever the question might be, yeah. you know, I do think to your point, the nervous system, and it really, really invites people into embracing the positive of something versus, mm-hmm. you know, what, what may feel uncomfortable or in some cases, maybe scary to people that they're changing their way of thinking and they might lose some part that is maybe on the more unhealthy side of the scale, yeah. right? Of yeah. the emotional yeah. scale. So yeah. I just think it's, it's brilliant. It's brilliantly put when you think about that. Well, and so like, if I'm going to apply this um, and it, when I'm triggered or um, you know, I would, I would go inward with these questions. Yeah. So like something is triggering me, I would go inward and ask this question and it, and there's actually, there's epigenetics involved in these questions too, right? Because oh, yeah. your, your mind, your subconscious is searching for an answer, right? Mm-hmm. For that, okay, for the why is it okay to let go? Right. Yeah, why you is know? it okay to let go? Why, yeah. And yeah, um, that, those questions, um, another question that I, I find very, very, interesting and always uh gets me and and that is to ask myself and i ask other people to ask for themselves is why am i valuable Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. why am i strong Mm -hmm. right and this thing about what 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 we talked about earlier about how we're always taking the, the the past into the present yeah and and one question to remind you is to ask why is the past the past and why is now now mm-hmm. yeah yeah we talk a lot um on the podcast as well just about you know routine and practice and yeah. you know um you know having a, a daily practice that really sets you up to be successful and evolving and, and, you know, living in a mindful, mindful way. And, and, you know, I could easily see those couple of questions around, you know, why am I valuable? Why am I strong being part of even your morning ritual in the morning, kind of, Mm -hmm. you know, really, really coming into yourself and reminding yourself of your worth and, Mm -hmm. and, and power on a daily basis. I think, And that's okay. If it's different Yeah, every day, right. It's good. Just yeah. notice what is coming up. Yeah. No, I think that's interesting. Mm. That's you know, interesting. why is it okay to not be perfect? Mm. Mm. Is that, you know, that would be like, if you're trying to evolve past some of those things that really make you strong as, and probably successful also make you crazy. You know, there's some of those, those attributes yeah. that we have, yes. you know, why that's is, great. yeah. That's mm-hmm. fantastic. Why is it okay to not be perfect? And that's what I was thinking of. Mm-hmm. Why is it okay to many, not make many everybody can happy? Relate yes. to that. Yeah. Well, what about? I'm not. Now I'm gonna. No, I'm just playing with you here. But yes. I was just thinking when you said that, I thought, well, how about if we could say, why is it okay to be perfect? Mm. Oh. You know how we how we tend to say that nobody is perfect. Yes, we do. Yeah. That's okay. a, is that a box? <laughs> well, I th- I think that I think there are many layers to that one actually. <laughs> but I want to point out one thing. Yes. Mm-hmm. And speaking of language here, 
So if I take the Icelandic word for perfection or being perfect, mm. and I translate that directly to English, it means fully present. Oh my gosh. So can we be fully present? And how perfect is that? Well, that is perfect. You'd manifest anything you want if you're fully present. <laughs> I, mean, I think that's, that's the key to to manifestation. I think I want only on cork can close. I think okay. I, I think I want to move to Iceland. We're moving to Iceland. Yes. Yeah, that is. We've got to learn the language, though, Gina. I know, uh, but I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with just the perfect. <laughs> I'm gonna start there and hang out until I pick, pick up a few more I words. Love it. That's brilliant. That's, that's a, that is amazing. I love that. Uh, well, I think that's a a fantastic way to wrap up our our time today i mean i, I don't that's a mic drop moment and it I really mean, is but let's it let's, gives us all an opportunity to be perfect it does fully present being fully present i love yeah. that is there anything that we didn't cover yeah. that you'd like to showcase before our time is up yeah um you've been such a graceful <laughs> host it's been so much fun oh, that's um great. All I want to say is for people really to start to think about their lives and think about what sort of a world they, we want to live in. Mm -hmm. And um, just remember that despite you might feel that you've been boxed in, in a box, 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 and you can't feel that you can even breathe because you're so conditioned. Mm -hmm. I'm going to and with a little secret. And the secret is all of the boxes, every single one of the boxes, they don't exist. They are made up. Mm. Now that's the true mic drop moment. Now that is the true <laughs> mic drop. Yeah. No, I, yeah. And so they only, incredibly true. They only exist when you believe they exist and boy do they feel like they're real at that time but they're not mm. yeah okay well Incredible. Runa you are a gift to our world you're mm. a gift to leadership really truly a powerhouse yeah and, you know if I if we really think about what like you said your story and what you've created and, and just your it's conviction amazing. to create it mm -hmm. for others and this real um, give back to to leaders to communities to women uh, to the world is it's incredible what you have done absolutely Thank we're you. incredibly honored to have the conversation with you today yeah and so audience we will link in the show mm -hmm. notes her website so you can get a hold of her for you do leadership coaching and mentoring right yeah. so that people can contact yeah. you yeah. and then go get her book branding your x factor and then the story of boxes yes. the good the bad the ugly and the ugly yes <laughs> yes and like we're film, just better Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, is the movement still continuing? The No More Boxes Movement Breakfast? Yeah. Is that? Yeah, mm -hmm. we oh, are. Fantastic. And we are, um, the, the focus has been, um, well, this focus has been really pointing out the these boxes, but gender box is a big topic yeah. for us. And we are playing a game called the Game of Boxes, which is really about expanding and, and, and our awareness towards money and wealth, which is a very mm. interesting. Oh, oh no, that is that is fascinating. And I can't so wait for the the game ahead. of boxes dot world. Okay. You can see when we're playing next time. Okay. Okay. I love that. It happens we'll, all online. Yeah. Okay. We'll link everything in the show notes. I can't wait for the manifesto as well. The manifesto. Look and thank world. you so much for your time. We are truly blessed and honored. And we got so much out of this conversation. We know our audience is too. Absolutely. Thank you, Runa. Thank you. Bye, everyone.